Thank you for joining us at KTVM.com. My name is Jonathan Athens. Joining us is Colonel Ann Wright. She is a career military officer and diplomat. She resigned out of protests of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. She joins us now. Colonel, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Let's begin at the beginning. Where do you place yourself on the political spectrum? Well, I place myself on the spectrum of that we should be using diplomatic means to resolve issues and not the full brunt of the U.S. military to resolve issues. And why did you resign? I resigned in opposition to the war in Iraq, the invasion and occupation of an oil-rich Arab Muslim country that had not attacked the United States. In your estimation, is this a war for oil? Yes, I believe it is. I think when some of the very first people the Bush administration brought into Iraq were oil executives whose job it was to, to create the law, the hydrocarbons law that uh, Iraq was supposed to sign, but the Iraqi parliament has refused to sign it to this state seven years later. Let's look back on a little bit of history. It was in 1996 President Bill Clinton signed the resolution that there would be regime change in Iraq. In your estimation, is this the inevitable conclusion of that policy? Well, that was a policy that was actually a, a part of a broader policy called the Project for the New American Century that actually was cooked up by many senior members of the Republican Party. And Bill Clinton, uh, the, the Congress, passed that resolution that indeed there, the U.S. should spend $100 million for regime change in, in Iraq. Uh, that was part of a, uh, a long-term policy for uh, obtaining resources that were needed for the empire of the United States so that we could keep our standard of living. Thomas Ricks wrote Fiasco, his mm -hmm. book. He is with the uh, Washington paper, and he made note that if you have the right strategy and the wrong tactics, you can always adjust your tactics. But if you have the wrong strategy, whatever you do tactically doesn't work. In your estimation, what would be the right strategy in approaching a war on terror post 9-11? Well, I think for, for people that are trying to uh, actually um, uh, harm U.S. interests. Uh, you know, it's one thing if a state is actually uh, saying to the United States, we're going to go to war with you. That's, that's one thing. But it's when it's uh, individual groups, small groups of people, I don't think mil the military is the, the mechanism uh, that we need to be using for it. We need to be having international law enforcement methods that track down these criminal elements. And in fact, if you look at what's happened in the last nine years, there's there's been much more success by using international law enforcement techniques to go after these people than the heavy might of the U.S. military. There's been a different school of thought that says you can't really fight terrorism, you can only respond or react to it. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think we do have uh, intelligence agencies that have the capability of uh, uh, surveillance, of satellite surveillance. I mean, we, we know these things. We know that uh, they can listen in on our conversations. In fact, the, our government for, for five years uh, broke the law and listened in on us uh, without the, uh, I mean, it was against the law and they did it. I mean, there are tremendous capabilities of tracking uh, groups of people. Uh, and that you don't really have to have the military going in and go, and ending up, in most cases, uh, uh, killing innocent civilians. We've been in Iraq seven years now. We've been in Afghanistan nine years now. In your estimation, is this another Vietnam? Well, the, we have two successive administrations that seem to think that war is the way that we shall resolve issues. And in the same manner, we had three administrations of, uh, during the Vietnam War that kept saying, War is the way to do it, war is the way. I think this is another Vietnam, and unless we, the people, can force the Obama administration to turn course, we will see our, our country continue to be bogged down into a war that can, or a, a, a circumstance that can only be resolved by political means, not by military means. Right now, if you could have an audience with President Obama, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, what would you tell them? I would tell them we need to remove our troops from Iraq and from Afghanistan, that we should support uh, reconciliation efforts uh, by the Afghan government with members of the Taliban. Colonel, thank you for joining us, and thank you for joining us at KTVM.com.